here we go. This is, this is we're about to get the money shot. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? There he is. Holy <laughs> shit. He's a fucking butt plug. <laughs> He's a robo butt plug man. Oh, <laughs> he's, he's so confused. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but he's scared now. Oh no, here he comes. She is, dude. <laughs> so intimidating. So Iron Man, he's a pretty popular character, uh, especially in the last decade. Uh, so as a result of that, there's been a few ripoffs of him. Uh, we know that, of course. You know, it's... remember Metal Man? How could I forget? I want you to say the word shield. Why? Just do it. Shield. What the hell? Holy shit! What are you? What the hell are you? So today we watched this TV movie from 1977 called Exoman. Uh, Exoman is kind of like Iron Man. Um, the, the reason we watched this is because I, when I was looking up Iron Man ripoffs, this one came up constantly. Like, people call it the ripoff Iron Man from the 70s. So, I was pretty intrigued to see if it really was an Iron Man ripoff, but there's barely any similarities between Tony Stark and uh, Nick. There's zero. Like, <laughs> the dude doesn't even seem like a competent scientist. This TV movie was made as a backdoor pilot for an Exoman TV series and it did not get picked up supposedly because of the lack of merchandising potential <laughs> which I mean I can't believe that because obviously kids would have gone crazy for their Exoman action figures I mean look at that thing that screams it, toy I mean but at the same time also have you seen the Playmobil Spaceman <laughs> that were from the 60s <laughs> They look kind of like that. Mm -hmm. I don't think that was the only thing that, that prevented it from being that picked up. That wasn't the only like, issue, no. Well, I mean, I guess we should we should get into it, but boy, this is one of the probably one of the most boring things that we've seen. I wish you didn't have to testify against him. It'll be over soon, Em. Very soon. Don't worry. Okay, now I'll make breakfast while you take a shower. Days more, huh? You got it. I'm telling you. Right, I'm Boy, I'm sure glad that we get to see this whole walk to their place. Like, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> They're almost there. Here's the thing that I've learned from doing this show is that uh, TV in the 70s sucked. <laughs> like, it just yeah. sucked. There's just so much. This is a 90-minute movie, and there's, like, maybe 20 minutes worth of story here. Yeah. <laughs> like, like we said, this isn't all that similar to Iron Man other than the presence of an exoskeleton suit. Uh, other than that, it's a very different story. Yeah. So the story goes is that there's this physics teacher... His name is Nick something, I don't even care. And boy is he boring, both in the reality of the movie and as a character and as an actor. It's just, he's so one note. If my theory is correct, one day I'll be able to walk into this class and attach one of my power cells, which is smaller than a dime, to that table. And by remote control, I'll be able to make a move anywhere I wanted to. And then I'll put it into a suit. I'll run around. You say it's impossible? You say it's unbelievable? <laughs> well, I say that once... <laughs> well, let me tell you something. What, what happened to his voice right there? Jet plane to a bird like, really good. You think it's impossible? I tell you, it's not. We're establishing that he's a teacher, 
and that he's into physics and chemistry and all right. that. Uh, but he's just saying a bunch of, you know, techno babble that's hard to understand. And not only are we bored, but the students in the reality of the film are also bored and falling and, asleep. And falling asleep. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Exoman talks to one of his students who's falling asleep. Apparently, this kid is late because of his job, so he offers to help him by getting him a loan from the bank. And when he's at the bank, a robbery starts. These these crooks show up to rob the bank. It's Robo and well, well huh. and, yeah, and first we see this guy wearing a tan jacket, and he enters the bank, and he looks very suspicious. And he's in the bank already, and then he pulls out a mask and he puts it on. Like he ducks down in front of the teller and then the whoop. <laughs> yeah. a different guy. Yeah. But like they saw your face, dude. They saw it. Like you're on camera. You're that's, fooling nobody. That's it. Yeah, you're fooling um, absolutely nobody. But yeah, like so they start robbing the bank. Two of the robbers get shot. And the one with the tan jacket, he runs out of the bank. And our hero runs after him. And catches him and performs a citizen's arrest. He doesn't need to do that. Like, he goes way too yeah, far. Yeah, like, he, he appears to have handcuffs out of nowhere. Because the guy is, like, like, with his hands behind his back. I don't trust the guy who just keeps handcuffs on him at all times. Like, that's a little weird. There's this main mob boss, uh, played by Jose Ferrar from Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah. Yeah, he's, like, the main bad guy. And they want to intimidate Exoman into not testifying uh, against the guy who robbed the bank. He has these two students. One of his students is, like, worried for him. Because they're like, dude, they're gonna kill you because you put that guy in jail. And he's like, ah, I'm fine, it's fine, it's whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna get killed over something silly like mm -hmm. catching a criminal. What batch number is this? 114. Why the heck don't you have it marked? Robenstein, you're supposed to record all formulations and give each batch a number. I do, number. Coach, most of the time. <sighs> that face. All right. <laughs> the other guy we named Mr. Smiles because he just has the greatest he's smile. He's the greatest disposition. He's just always happy. <laughs> like he's cracking little one-liners and stuff. Yeah, yeah we, we love him. Um, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. And another cool thing uh, that we liked was the car that Exo Man drives. It's like, I don't know what car model it is, but it looks like awesome. It has this like cool trunk that someone can go inside Swings of. Swings out, yeah. Yeah. So the coolest things in this movie uh, are Mr. Smiles and that car. Here's the action! Uh, something happened. I'm so glad something happened. Yeah, that was going on for so long. <laughs> oh my god. Mr. Smiles! His car, Mr. Smiles. The two best things in this movie yeah. are gone forever. Aw, oh, that's a bummer. Mr. Smiles on his way to get pizza for the rest of the group. He gets in the car and the car explodes because oh, yeah. the mobsters have wired it because they wanted to kill Exo Man. Exo Man finally gets like protection, you know, cops, uh, because the mobsters are out to get him. And he goes to do laundry and they have to accompany him to the laundry place. And we have to see them drive there, go inside, walk past the hallway, talk to the guy who operates the machines. Leave, and leave his clothes. Take a jog. Yeah, he leaves and takes a jog against them, I guess. Like, they go on a race, and it, it lasts for a while. So, yeah, they go on the run. Exoman comes back for his clothes, and there's this guy with a pipe uh, just waiting for him. And as Exoman is getting his laundry out of the machine, uh, the guy hits him in the butt with the metal pipe and he hits him in the butt so hard that he paralyzes Exoman. Hit hit him in the butt for massive damage. Yeah. Well Exoman from this point on is he's paralyzed from the waist down because his butt got broken. That's just biology. Like if you break someone's mm -hmm. butt they can't walk. 
So after this, uh, Exo Man still he is not intimidated from testifying, uh, but he receives a call where this one guy threatens to kill his girlfriend. Uh, his girlfriend is the mom from Alf, <laughs> by the way. Oh. So after that, he decides not not only not to testify, but he also just like stops talking to everyone. He goes on his depression. Uh, where he just has this look on his face, like... Looks even more bored with the movie. Yeah. Basically. We keep calling him Exo-Man, even though he doesn't become Exo-Man until about an hour into this hour and a half movie. <laughs> it we, takes... We were like, so, I was so confused. You're right, Coach. I've been trying hard, but why don't you get yourself another project to work? But who will help you if I go? Oh, this project isn't going anywhere not now oh my god he should have gotten the idea to do the iron man suit already <laughs> like is this, that, is that, this happening that, to the movie like, like is, <laughs> what the fuck is going on why is this called exo man <laughs> should be I'll called my later get my stuff depressed Ooh. paraplegic <laughs> man man <laughs> Science things keep popping up, and you, yeah, like you said, you keep waiting for this to relate to the Exo Man suit, uh, but he keeps like not really putting it together until way later. Until that it like the most to obvious him. like armor. Wait, <laughs> suits mm -hmm. of armor. He asked his student to keep tabs on the guy who paralyzed him, mm -hmm. and he finds out where he lives, and he personally goes. To taunt him. So Exo Man provokes the guy mm -hmm. uh, to come get him, and we finally get to see him put on the Exo Man suit. And it's pretty glorious because he doesn't just put it on, he has this thing sarcophagus. It, yeah, it's like a sarcophagus with a mold that he gets inside. The thing closes, and when it opens up, ta da! There's Exo Man. Finally, a goddamn hour and ten minutes into this fucking movie, we finally get the title character. It's so, that, that, that really is, like, a puzzling thing that I really want to stress. That's, like, we don't... that's probably the reason why I think it's the most boring, is because, like, there's, the point of the movie isn't brought about until, like, after, more than halfway through the movie. Like, yeah. yeah. It's, and, it's a big problem. Well, yeah, and you gotta think about it from, like, the point of view of, like, an audience from 1977 that doesn't really know Iron Man. I mean, we watched this because we heard it was a shitty Iron Man ripoff, but if this just comes on on television and you don't know anything, you'd just be like, what is the point of all this? A while ago, we watched the 1970s Spider-Man pilot, and right. that one was boring as fuck too, but not only do you see Spider-Man in the opening title sequence, uh, Peter Parker actually gets into the suit like within half an hour of the film starting. Like, so... the because they know people are here to see Spider Man, so you see him relatively early on. But here, you don't see Exo Man until an hour and ten minutes into this. It's so long. Yeah. But yeah, we fu when you do though, <laughs> when you do though, it's amazing. <laughs> There's typos inside the suits indication <laughs> heads up display. <laughs> He's <laughs> just flailing around. It must be so hard to walk in that thing. Yeah. Jeez. Malfunction. 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 They didn't really forget the C. They really did, didn't they? <laughs> There's a malfunction with this. I think this whole movie has a malfunction, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so the guy shows up at his lab and he puts on the suit and he very slowly walks towards the guy and he chases him into the street. How he chases him in the suit that slow, I don't know. Well, because the guy just like runs into an alley. And it corners himself, right, yeah. Yeah, so he has no choice but to start climbing up this pipe and, and up the building and once he gets to the top of the building, he just, like, trips and falls and dies. So, our hero didn't even do anything. 
I mean, the, the Exo Man suit, from what we see on here, is, like, not super effective because all he does is chase this guy into the street very slowly and it runs out of power, which we can tell it by the... It runs out of, like, oxygen, too. It, it runs out... Like, okay, yeah. amazing. It's, like, it's not even in space. <laughs> like, he, why does he need to filter the oxygen? Why? You're right. That's what? A, that's an excellent point, Nico. This is not a suit in space. Yeah, is... he could, it could just have, like, air holes. Anywhere. Like... <laughs> a guy just walking on the street finds him mm -hmm. and reactivates his suit. So we get to the climax of the movie. Exo Man goes to the mansion of the main mobster. And we finally... Finally get to see him do halfway cool stuff. Run now. Right, here we go. Uh, <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> That's like the only cool thing that has happened thus far. If we had had more of that earlier, I wouldn't be so bored. It's it's fun, like, time-sensitive action scenes that are very indicative of the kind of action TV you could expect from he, that era. He catches up to the lead mobster and just stands in front of him. And then we cut away to the cop letting him in the wheelchair know that they, they found the guy who paralyzed him, he's dead. And I guess Exo Man turned the mobster to the police along with a folder of documents that have all the crimes the mobster has committed. So Exo Man and his girlfriend are all happy that it all worked out. And the movie ends with them in this ghost street. <laughs> This is a dead city. There's nobody in the city. <laughs> Completely yeah, abandoned. Where's everyone? This is like post-apocalypse. So, Nico, would you recommend the... Nope. F <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I will not recommend it. Don't okay. see it? Uh-huh. It's not good. This clearly comes from a time where television was a thing that you could just put on and not even really pay attention to. It's slow, it's boring, nothing happens for about 90 minutes. It wastes our time so hard. The only thing that I would say is worth looking at in this are the actual parts that Exo Man is in with the suit. So just skip to the end. Yeah, no, just skip, skip to, to the, the... Like the middle to end of the movie. And I mean, even at that, it's not, like, it's not worth it for those scenes. I mean, like, yeah. It's... So, yeah, that's a, that's a no from me. Who do you think would win a fight between Exo Man and Metal Man? Well, I gotta say Metal Man because he can do so many more things. He has a shield, he can fly. Turn invisible. He can turn invisible. He um... also kind of looks a little more like Iron Man. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, I yeah I think I gotta agree. Uh, Metal, <laughs> Metal Man, Man would, would win. Yeah, Metal Man would kick Exo Man's ass. And... Exo Man can barely walk. <laughs> like this, he can't fly. He can't do shit. All right. Well, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.